Hi everybody. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to walk you through the basic steps you need to get this project done. And my before we begin, before we begin list, so we're going two steps back, I just want to remind you, keep in mind a lot of the things we've talked about so far this semester. You know, things like alignment, repetition, proximity, choosing a clear color palette, um, you know, choosing the right fonts, should it be serif or should it be sans serif. You know, those are the kinds of things that you have to remember in any graphic design project. You know, you've got to get yourself out of that high school mindset where you learn for the project and then you forget about it. You know, the stuff we're talking about in this class is stuff that hopefully will stick with you uh, throughout your career. Okay, so but before you start um, designing your mock-up, you got to have a couple things. First, sketch it out on paper with a pencil. And I understand a lot of you like take notes online and that kind of stuff. It's fine. But it's just something natural design-wise about using a pencil on paper. You know, there's sort of a lot of clever sayings about how a sketch is the first step between an idea and reality. You know, so sketch it out. Think about where things are going to line up, what kind of content are you going to have, uh, those kinds of things. And do a couple sketches. You know, it, it really is one of the, it just makes the whole process a lot easier when you're essentially building something that you've already designed. You know, separating the design portion and the construction portion really makes your life a lot easier. Second, do you have that logo ready? You know, before you start building any sort of digital media project, you want to have as many of the parts lined up as possible. Okay, so you should have a logo ready to go in a separate Photoshop file before you get started. Okay, and similarly, you should have your colors, your fonts, all that kind of stuff selected. You also should understand that older web browsers and people who haven't updated um, their computers in a while, lots of people are still using Windows XP, might not be able to display certain fonts in websites. There's something called cascading style sheets. And cascading style sheets are a way that web pages are visually designed. And you can actually embed fonts in websites. Okay, For a very long time, um, you couldn't use fonts on websites, realistically. There was a very short list of fonts that were available. Now you can. But at the same time, you have to accept the fact that somebody looking at this website on an old piece of crap computer might not get that font. Okay, But colors are important. Colors will be consistent. Um, and you can choose fonts as well. So, you know, that, that style guide, like, again, we did that for a reason. You know, like you should have at least a loose style guide in your mind for this website before you begin. And lastly, your content. Okay, I'm not going to name names, but quite a few people in our class learned the hard way that Adobe Photoshop does not spell check. Okay, I would guarantee that 95% of the spelling errors that you've seen in advertisements on television and magazines in your life were done in Adobe Photoshop because it just it doesn't spell check. It's not for that. You know, and so content should be written in something like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. That's where you write. Don't write in Photoshop. It makes your life miserable. Okay, so once you have done a brisk mental review of everything we've learned so far, haha, but at least in some idea, and you also have these four things ready to go, it's time to design your website. But before we begin, let's take a look at the way that websites are structured. I'm picking two. Okay, this is Vox.com. As I've mentioned before, it's really sort of cutting edge new website. And one of the things you're going to notice is as I scroll down, you're seeing lots of room on the side here. Okay, because some people might be viewing Vox.com on an iPad in portrait mode, right? Long way. Um, some people might be viewing it on a laptop like I am, which is wider. And so therefore, some websites deal with that different aspect ratios by just using white, white space wisely, you know, and so therefore if the shape, and here I go, I'm resizing it, so if this web browser is reshaped like an iPad in portrait mode, you can see it doesn't really make any difference. This column stays the same. And even if it gets narrower, you can see that it kind of, um, you know, it, it still handles it, but that's what it does, is it uses white space. Um, 
you know, uh, to handle the different resolutions. Because you got to remember, people are going to look at websites on thousands of different devices and multiple different web browsers. Web graphic design for the web is one of the most challenging forms of web design just because you never know how people are going to view the site. Making websites look consistent browser to browser, computer to computer is one of the great challenges of web design and it's why a lot of designers hate designing for the web. All right, but, but basically putting all of your content in a column in the center is one of the ways that graphic designers for the web handle those problems. The second way that they're handled is websites like Abduzito. Okay, this is the Brazilian graphic design website I always talk about in class. It's one of my favorites. And one of the things, here we go, I'm going to resize it, is that you can see that all of the content, notice that, so you can see here, like this line right here, this line actually, notice it doesn't wrap or anything. See that? It's just the, the letters get smaller and the pictures get smaller. Okay, and so it scales to the space. So some, some websites keep everything in a column in the center to help deal with different screen resolutions. Some websites scale everything so they get bigger or smaller. And when you're in industry, let's say you've got that first internship or you're working for a small advertising company, it's really important to talk to the basically the web architects, the guys who are going to be or the women who are going to be building the website and ask them, like, how do you do this? Because different web technologies kind of steer you towards different types of visual design. Okay, that being said, here's how we begin in Photoshop, right? So here's my logo, as I said, okay, I also have over here my palette, okay, we're really dealing with a three color palette, I'm going to keep this easy. I've got my two colors, one is called cilantro, the other is called tortilla, and I'm just going to use black as my third color, all right? And so when I go to file and I say new, notice that there are some web sizes there. And I want you to take a look at the different options. You have web minimum. That's like somebody on a really old crappy computer, which means about a thousand pixels wide. And then down here, Mac Pro Retina Display. Uh, that's 2,800 pixels wide. And so hopefully you, you're kind of you know sitting there going, ah, what the heck is this crap? Right, that sucks. It sucks to have, I mean, one is more than double of the other. Okay, web most common and Mac Pro Retina 15. I mean, so therefore, Will, which one do you actually design for? Okay, well, there's no right answers. You know what I mean? This is not a multiple choice test. You have to think about your client. If you're doing a website for a payday loans company, then you probably can assume that the, your clientele is fairly economically disadvantaged. They're not going to have the latest, greatest computer with a high resolution monitor and so therefore designed for a lower resolution. If you're designing the website for a Maserati dealer or uh, you know um, for Mount Blanc pens or something that's extremely expensive you can kind of assume that your viewers of that website are going to have high bandwidth, they are going to have high resolution monitors so again there's no right answer. It's the, the correct answer is the answer that best suits your client. All right, so I am going to call this uh, front page mockup, and I'm just going to stick with the sort of web most common. All kinds of people like burritos. So there it is. Okay, and it's giving you an artboard, by the way. It's a different kind of look, but mm, it's fine. All right, and so I'm going to use tortilla uh, as my background color. So I'm just going to take my fill, pow, and there it is. Just we're kind of going with the metaphor that, you know, the tortilla is sort of like the canvas of the burrito artist. Uh, and so we're going to use that as our background. I'm going to take my, uh, and now when I'm going over here, one of the things I can do is, and it's up to you, I can go and I can say view and then show and then grid. That puts a grid over the whole thing. Okay. You can turn it off if you want. And if you turn on the grid, you might want to say snap to grid. Okay. I like to use guides. Some people like grids. It's up to you. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down. And you're kind of, and this is actually, I mean, you, you know, you can work numerically or eye it up. I'll just eye this up. So I'll say, well, if that's like a typical sort of laptop screen, 
you know, I'm going to use this top piece and, I, you know, if there's only one store for the tiny burrito, it's not a chain, it's just there's one restaurant, I'm going to put the logo over here on the right and I'm going to put the address over here on, I'm sorry, the logo on the left, address on the right, okay? But, you know, as I mentioned in the lecture, web design is a little different than designing for other media. You know, when you're designing uh, graphics for television, people are flipping channels all the time. So you might want to have Cartoon Network on the screen in big letters. Or if you're designing a flyer, you want to catch people's eye. So you might want to put the restaurant's name in big font. But a website, going to a website is a conscious choice. And so therefore, I don't need to put the logo in a massive you know, amount of pixel real estate, you know, realistically. And so therefore, I'm going to take my, my logo. I'm going to say select all, edit copy, and then I go over here and I say edit paste. And then I'm going to go to my old friend, the free transform tool. And you remember there's this lock up here, so I'm going to lock it. And then I'm going to scale this down a little bit and put it up at the top. And I hit return. Looks good. Okay. Now on the right, I want to have the address. And so I'm going to take my type tool. I'm going to pick black for my font. And then over here on the right, I'm going to drag it out. Now notice those pink lines that are showing up. Again, this is, you know, when I was talking about alignment, I'm not making that up. This isn't some sort of esoteric theoretical fufa. You know, people know if things line up, they look good. And Photoshop is sort of silently begging you to use good alignment. And so I drag out my text box. And I'm going to pick a font right now. I have this huge font. I'm going to pick something like 26 out of 24 point. And then in there, I'm going to type in the address. 34 Bay Street, Potsdam, New York, 13676. What? There we go. Okay. Hmm. This is new. Let's center a So, 34 Bay Street, last name. Oh, I know. I probably have some now. Notice I put my, my font. You're probably watching me, right? Like, I hit return. I started to type where to go. Well, I'm going to go to my character palette here and notice I'm going to set this to auto. And because what happened is I probably had some sort of, there it is, I probably had some sort of crazy amount of leading there in um, six, six, seven, six. Okay, and so I put that there. Now, um, so there's my address. You know, and then um, I might even, you know, I could put our location, you know, maybe to make it easier for people. Um, and then I'll make that a little bit bigger or bolder or something. Let's see what do they got. Um, do, do, do. Okay, now a couple of things to note here. All right, now um, older websites, you are really limited as to what fonts you could use. There was actually a little, there was a list of sort of basic fonts like Helvetica, and that's what you had to use, and that was about it. In current web design, there's something called Cascading Style Sheets 3, and that allows you to embed fonts in websites. But here's the problem. Again, there's no right answer, because if someone is using an old web, an old web browser, and there's lots of people who have not updated their web browser, they're not going to be able to see those fonts. Okay. The other font thing you have to take in consideration is for blind people. And I have to admit, and I bet some of you hearing that are having a similar reaction, like websites for blind people, like what are you talking about? But a lot, there are a lot of people who use screen readers that read websites to them. And if you are doing a website for anybody 
who is dealing with government contracts or receives any money from the government, state or federal, your website has to be um, compatible for blind people. It's not going to figure into this design instance, but it is one of those things to consider. There's something called alt tags. For example, if someone doesn't load the images, you have to put a little bit extra content in there to tell them what's in those images. Okay, but realistically, just understand that when you're designing for the web, you can use fonts unless they're commercial fonts generally, and you have to understand that if somebody on an old computer might not be able to see those fonts. But anyway, okay, so here is uh, here is um, my uh, top bar. Okay, looks good. You know, tiny chihuahua burritos, and so and our location. Now it's time for my navigation bar, and this is where I'm going to use guides. Okay, and then I tell you what, this class, it's not random the way I design things. If you remember way back to our first assignment, we were doing image sequences, right? Well, what did you have to do for those image sequences? You had to evenly space images across. Oh, crap. Here this is again. Okay, so if I want to put my buttons to go across here, I have to evenly space them in the exact same way that you had to evenly space the images in the image sequences assignment. Mind blown, right? Oh my gosh, it's like some weird movie where the person at the beginning of the movie is back at the end of the movie. And so I've got to think how big, how many buttons do I have? How much room do I have? Okay, and so anyway, um, yeah, and so I could either drag out guides or I'm going to be lazy and I am going to use the rectangle tool. Okay, and then in the rectangle tool, I'm going to go to, I'm going to dock that. Uh, but in the rectangle tool, I'm going to make them my cilantro color. Here they are. I'm going to go up here to my fill again and pick cilantro. My stroke is going to be no stroke. There it is. And then I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to take Matthew Inman, the guy from the Oatmeal's Advice, and I'm going to keep this website real simple. You know, it's going to have a burrito, it's going to have a menu, it's going to have about us, and it's going to have reservations, three buttons. So I'm going to make my first button like this. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to call it menu okay and I'm actually I'll call it menu button it also PS this is very similar to the mapping assignment okay it's not random okay and then I'm gonna type in my text and so I'm gonna put it below to make it a little easier on myself so I'll write in the word menu and I'm gonna put that in the center And then, just like in the mapping assignment, just like I recommended for that mapping assignment, I'm going to go to my layers, and I'm going to make a new folder. If you see, so I'm going to make a folder, and I'm going to call this menu. I have caps lock on, so it looks like I'm yelling. Menu button, and then I take menu, bonk, and I take menu button, bonk. I put them in there. Okay. Now, I can duplicate that folder duplicate the group, pow, and I'll call this um, about, I'll call it reservations. And it's still in all caps, why not? All right, and now I can take this, now you might be saying, well, where is it? It's exactly under the original one. So I'm gonna drag this over a little bit. I should be using these to make sure that they're spaced out the same. And then I'm gonna go here, and I'm going to type in reservations. Now you don't want to, um, you don't want to, I had caps lock, I'll keep caps lock on, why not? Okay, now in some places, like when we were doing um, the web, or doing PowerPoint design, I was kind of like a bonkers lunatic about making the font big, right? You know, like in, in, photo, in PowerPoint, you're probably, uh, gonna puke if you hear me say use big fonts one more time but in the web 
and it's funny because some of you are doing it, some of you don't know how to do this. If you you can actually zoom in on web pages, and so I'm I'm not saying use an eight point font. Obviously, that'd be ridiculous. But if somebody does have a vision problem or just wants it larger, they can make it larger. Okay, and so uh, so you don't need to be as obsessive about using a large font uh, as you did in PowerPoint. You know, again, each type of media has little intricacies for designing for that media. Okay, and then uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my third one. So I take this group and I duplicate the group again. And I'm going to call this about us. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over. There it is. And look at that. Can you just look what Photoshop is doing. I want you to take a close look. See how it says 26 pics? Again, it's begging you. Space it out evenly. So space it out evenly. So there's reservations, and then I just take the word reservations, nice and neat. Oh, now watch what I did. I, I When I took the type tool, I missed, and it made a new type layer. I'm going to get rid of that type layer immediately. I'm going to open up About Us, click on it. Now I will try that again. Okay, there it is. All right, so there you go. I've got my header done. I've got my um, navigation bar done. Okay, that does not look even to me. I gotta admit. So I might walk. Um, I'm gonna walk the uh, about us uh, over. And by the way, see it's in a folder, so that allows me to take that whole button and move it as a chunk. And so um, I'm going to walk that over just a little bit so that way it's even. Okay, so again, header done, navigation bar done. Now, in my lecture, I said, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for you to do. But, you know, you don't have to have a sidebar of navigation and a top bar of navigation. If you want to do that, that's great. Or if you're doing something that's more complex where it's warranted, Maybe your big hit links go across the top and then a longer list of links that you want to include, include go down the side. That's up to you. Okay, now it's time for your content. And this is where you can really design. You know, it, like in this instance, like since I have all the content for this, um, for this uh, you know, already done, I might include some sort of splash image. That's what it's called. Something to get people's attention. Uh, on the front and so now I'm just going to be lazy here so I'm going to say like uh, Chihuahua in a burrito and I apologize if this is uh, inappropriate what I get but let's go to images oh look at this okay and so there <laughs> that is awesome okay and so I'm going to uh, take this awesome uh, image of a chihuahua wrapped up as a burrito and I'm going to use this um, kind of as my splash page for my front okay and so I'm going to move that uh, over the bottom right just because it's unbelievably perfect for my content Okay, and I'm going to line it up to the side of my menu bar. Now, you might think, well, I've got my type here. But remember, again, like this website is going to be seen in web browsers of a lot of different aspect ratios. And so you want things to line up with each other, but you don't really need to have like New York Times style perfect alignment because that is extremely difficult to do in the web. Okay, and so you can be done, but it's just tough. And so I'm going to put my sort of little splash image on the front. And then over here to the right, I'm going to include a paragraph um, that's going to say, uh, you know, come to the tiny uh, 
uh, rejects. Okay, and then uh, and then when, as you can see, I am typing in it first. I'm gonna left line it. One of the funniest things to me about the style guide is everybody was really hot on center aligning paragraphs of text. Okay, if I had five cents for everybody who centered aligned their text in the style guide, I would probably have 65 cents. Okay, not a lot of cents, but uh, but there were a lot of people who did that. Okay, and so uh, so anyway. What we're going to do here is, um, so I'm going to put my type there, and I'm kind of being, um, not following my own rules, but uh, but the idea that I'm just going to put my type in, decide, theoretically, you should have, like, this prepared in Microsoft Word. I'm, I don't have that for this example. You know, uh, we are the, well, let's see. We were voted the best. We were voted the best uh, Mexican restaurant in St. Lawrence County three years in a row. Pow, see, I'm making all kinds of typos. Not being caught in Photoshop. Okay. You would like to see how, you know, and then you might want to have a little bit of policy. Policies at the top, you know what I mean? Uh, or whatever, you know, think about the type of information that's relevant. See our menu. Our menu, linking reserve. See, it's tough. Reserve, and you won't catch it, I swear. Okay, so there's my beginning. Okay, and then, uh, and so there it is. And now I'm going to try to use alignment. I think that already does line up to the top. And this is it. There you go. I have designed a very basic and clean front page. Okay, now you might think there's not a lot to this, but there shouldn't be a lot to this. You know, if somebody, if you go to a restaurant website, you don't want a million things to choose from on the front. Okay, some of you are going to select more complex clients. That's great. And, and have more. But in general, you know, don't overthink this. It doesn't have to be something totally berserk with a million, uh, a million selections. But once you get to this stage, like what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save it. Save as. I'm going to call it frontpagemockup.psd. Looks great. Now is when I can start to design. Okay. And so, like, for example, one of the things that people like now are, like, textured websites. And so I might actually go... And look for like in Google, I might look for um, tortilla texture, you know. And so I might. Oh, look at this. Okay, now I don't know if I'm going to use these because they kind of look like diseased skin up close. Okay, that one's actually a pretty good one. That's a little small. Okay, but if I could find one of these that looks good, I might take that tortilla texture. And I might drop it behind um, if it looks appealing. And you have to be so careful with this when you're dealing with food. Okay? And so, um, because you don't want to do anything that looks gross. And so, like that. That might not be bad. And so, I might take, and this is where you can start to experiment. And so, I might take this tortilla texture, go and paste it and then scale it and then see well what if I made the whole background look like a tortilla would that make it more or less legible does it contribute to the design you know I'm using a sort of flat design. do I want to use a shadow do I want to make the fonts larger okay these are design decisions but what I've done hopefully in this video is get you to that first step where you have now built a basic framework for a website mock-up, and then it's up to you to continue to design. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, I want you, so now that you've watched this, there should be some related links. Okay? 
and then with those links um, take a look at those readings and then also I'm going to suggest you watch a couple videos on lynda.com that are going to take you through uh, design for the web if any of you have any questions or maybe you would like um, a more detailed explanation of some of the functionality in Photoshop when applied to the web okay your final product you're going to turn this into me uh, according to the specifications in the write-up but then you're also going to do a save as to save it as a JPEG so you can insert it into your PowerPoint file so make sure you save this when I do a save I want to make sure that it's saved as a PSD then from that PSD you're going to export a PDF and a JPEG to turn into me alright good luck